Good morning, brethren. Today I want to talk about bad habits, sin that we need to overcome in our lives. Remember, the journey that we're on, it's a process, a conversion process. And it doesn't happen overnight. But there's some things, some sin or some bad habit that just keeps hanging on. That's harder to get rid of, harder to, to overcome than others. So the question is, do you have a sin that just keeps hanging around? One that you may have had all your life. No matter how much we cry out to God to deliver us from this sin, it just keeps hanging on. It just hangs in there. It can be discouraging. So this, if you want to call it a sermon that, is meant to be of help for those of us who have this problem. And we don't know when it will hit us in the face, but it will if we are not keeping close to God in prayer. 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, Paul was given a thorn in the flesh to keep him humble. God knew that if the thorn in the flesh was taken away, that the man could begin to think more highly of himself than he ought. Now, I am no Paul, and I wasn't given the abilities that God gave him. But uh, I do have a thorn in the flesh as he had. And you do too. Sin is always a thorn in the flesh. And it will always hurt when we use God's spirit to fight it. And I know some of you may remember the song by the Rolling Stones. I'm just a soul whose intentions are good. Oh, Lord, don't let me be misunderstood. Our intentions may be good to put sin behind us, but it takes more than good intentions. And here's another one. Remember the TV show He Haw. I used to watch it a lot. Every week it was funny. A couple of hillbillies laying around singing gloom, despair, and agony on me. If it weren't for bad luck, I'd have no luck at all. We could just feel sorry for ourselves and quit growing spiritually. But this is not God's will for us to lie down and die because it is hard. You know, I think about how many times I've just wanted to lie because of my thorn in the flesh. That just keeps hanging on. Question, is your thorn in the flesh just hanging around? If so, we are in good company. You know, David, Daniel, and even Paul, yes. And even Jesus Christ, the very Son of God, has something to keep them humble. Jesus had Judas as a thorn. He knew that Judas would stab him in the back at the first opportunity. Guess what Judas did? Turn on Christ, giving him over to the high priest. Daniel was thrown into a den of lions. David's life was one of, of running from Saul who was out to kill him, and then later from his own son, who wanted a throne. Even though these righteous men have problems, they have won their fight. We too can win if we keep fighting the good fight as Christian soldiers. That's what we refer to as Christian soldiers. 
Even though sin just keeps hanging on, God tells us that we win. Even when things are at their worst, we have a promise from God that he will not break that promise. 1 Corinthians 3.3 3. Excuse me. We are carnal, fleshly people. And it is natural for us to be this way. It takes an added ingredient called the Spirit of God for us to even be able to begin to understand what God has given us. Sin just keeps hanging on because we want it to. We have to give ourselves completely over to God denying our carnal natures to have access to its own evil food. 1 Corinthians 3, 9 through 11. Jesus Christ is the answer. He will always be the answer. Sin is spiritual. We are not. We have to fight with God's spirit, which is far superior to Satan's weapons. Do we believe God when he says we win? God was before anything else. Lucifer only came on the scene when God created him. Sin began with Lucifer and spread to others under him. Since we have turned to Satan instead of God and elected to follow him, God is allowing us to learn deeply that sin is not something to laugh at. 2 Peter 2, 4 Angels have sinned, making it a spiritual thing. As well as physical, it has spiritual consequences. Romans 6, 14 through 16 and 1 Corinthians 9, 21 You can mark that down and read it later in your Bibles. Sin must not be allowed to control us. We need to overcome. We need to learn to rule over it. We cannot allow sin to be our master. There are too many people who cannot and will not go against sin. <clears throat> if it doesn't fit with our plan, we might just skip over it and go on to something else. Example, Jeremiah 10, 2. You know, we are told not to follow Satan's world and not to depend on the heavenly bodies that God created for help. And the creation cannot help us with spiritual matters. Lucifer is a created being and he nor his world will not help us follow God. We have to make that choice to do so, brethren. It's a choice. Because human beings are not created as robots. We're created with the will to do or not to do. We must fight with every ounce of our being to enter the kingdom of God. This fight is not just a one-time event. Protestants say, you've heard that old saying, once saved, always saved. Christ did it all on the cross. You don't have to do anything else. Well, they're misinformed, and that's very deceptive doctrine. This fight is not just a one-time event, as I stated. It continues until we die to our last breath. When we are baptized and receive God's Holy Spirit, we enter a new testament, a new covenant, binding agreement with God the Father and Jesus Christ, that we will live according to how Jesus Christ lived, and that we will love God with all our heart, with all our being, with all our might, with all our mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. And that is until our last breath. And that includes growing and overcoming. Growing in the word and overcoming sin. Our sins that just keep hanging on 
are for a reason, and that is to remind us that we need God. He doesn't need us. He wants us to be in his family, but he doesn't have to have us there. And we need God more than he needs us. It is a fervent desire of God that many come into his family. But he will not force us against our will. God has always given man to, to uh, given man a choice to obey or not. You know, I was reading Jeremiah where God told Zedekiah what would become of him and his city. He would not listen. Israel has not listened to the words of God now. It is time to pay the piper. Of course, we blame God, not ourselves. <clears throat> Remember when Jesus was speaking of Jerusalem? He said, how often would I have protected you as a mother hen under her wings? Our sins just keep hanging on because we don't want to turn them loose. We are a hard-headed people, even in the church. We don't rely on God as we should. This is why some will be left behind while others are protected in a place of safety. We read often that God protected his people, but they were not unshaved. They still had to endure some of the problems. You know, even in the days of Moses, when God repented of what he intended for his people, someone had to be held accountable. It is a hard thing to trust that God will help us. When the word of God created the universe, he already knew that most of his creation would rebel. Even when he came as a man, he knew that only a few would truly repent and follow him. He looked beyond that and saw a much clearer picture. Your sins that just keep hanging on will not last forever. God is saying, I love you and I am there for you. I want to know if you really love me enough or a promise of eternal life in my family. And you know, we as human beings will never be perfect. But we must not let those sins that just keep hanging on take control of our lives. God never said that his way would be a bed of roses. Roses are pretty, but you know they have thorns. Don't become discouraged. What we can do, God can. I mean, what I meant to say is, what we can't do, God can. And it can be discouraging when the same old sins just keep popping up. And usually when we least expect it. That is when we need to dig our toes deeper into the sand so we can be stronger when we need to be. <clears throat> Excuse me. That sand can be the foundation stone that we should have built on Jesus Christ. Again, let us go back to 1 Corinthians 1, 28-29. We cannot overcome sin unless God is active in our life. Do we read and study the Bible daily? You know, self-examination is not just a, a pre-passable thing. It should be every day. Sometimes I forget this and get bogged down in the, and get deeper and deeper in the quicksand. And somehow I've even allowed the sins that just keep hanging on to pull them under the quicksand. I find myself crying out for those who have slipped away, not looking at my own situation. 
and ask, am I slipping away also? It is going to take all of our strength to overcome these sins that will just not go away. You know, we read of Jesus telling the young rich man to put his whole heart into the way of life and to follow him completely. The young man became downhearted and went away not willing to forsake all. Some have fallen into this trap. Let's not follow there. We can't fight Satan alone. We need help. When those sins that just keep hanging on hit us in the face, the thing to do is cry out to God, our Savior, our High Priest, our Creator, our Mediator between us and God, and put it all in His hands. <clears throat> Excuse me, this is not easy, but God never said that it would be. That's something that converts have to understand from the beginning of baptism, after baptism, after they received the Holy Spirit. Because when you receive the Holy Spirit, you don't become 100% complete at that time. You begin a journey. It's a journey of growing and overcoming, as I stated earlier. When those sins that just keep hanging on hit us in the face, as I stated, we need to cry out to God, our Savior, our peace. This is not easy, but God never said it would be. I hope that this has given you some resolve to rely not on ourselves, but God. It's not over till it's our last breath, as I stated earlier. Jeremiah 31, 31. God has promised to make a new covenant with his people Israel. We are spiritual Israel. And he has made a new covenant with us. And we have the help of God's Holy Spirit. So those sins that just keep hanging on can more easily be overcome. Hebrews 8, verse 8. You can put that in your notes. God does find fault with us just as he did with physical Israel. But with the help of God's Spirit. We are now being offered redemption through the blood of Christ. Our sins have been covered by the blood of Christ. So turn loose of sins that just keep hanging on and put your trust in Christ. He hasn't done it for us. We need to strive to overcome. Isn't it better that we can trust God? So I want, brethren, I want to leave this positive note with you that God is stronger than all those sins that just keep hanging on. God forgave us, but we need to forgive ourselves and keep repenting. Every time we face those sins, we are coming more to developing the mind of Christ. So, brethren, those sins that just keep hanging on, I pray that you will keep repenting and look to Christ as a Passover approaches and the holy days of unleavened bread. Thank you for listening, brethren, and I bid you peace. And this is Ray Smith. Thank you.